Really quick before the video begins, I just wanted to make an amendment to something I mentioned in the Meet the Magi video regarding armor. I am stupid and I always screw up sets and variations, so just to confirm, the Magi is launching with two different armor sets with three variations each, and each variation has an alternate version. In regards to future armor, I jumped the gun because Pyra got new armor, so I assumed that Magi would too. We'll just have to wait and see. Anyways, enjoy the video. After weeks of enduring the Plague of Frogs, a new plague has come to For Honor. Eight Man Magi Games. From introducing us to future technology to bringing in a warrior from one of the most ancient civilizations in the world, anyone who thinks the Outlanders aren't shaking things up are in denial. The Magi can use his weapons and main feats two ways, giving him more tools to ram these blades into his adversaries. <laughs> okay, I'm done with the Egypt puns for now. Thankfully, to keep things simple, your chains are the same whether you're in staff or axe mode, so you don't need to memorize two different lists of button combos for one hero. You change stances by moving back and hitting guard break. You can also transform to cancel the recovery of any attack or parry. You can even do it as soon as you lock on so there's no awkward pause between locking on and swapping stances. However, unlocking or executing will force you back to the staff mode. The Magi can infinitely throw lights and heavies as long as you alternate between the two, and literally all your moves scout your chains. If you throw two lights or two heavies back to back, you finish your chain. Dodge attacks are a bit faster in Axe Mode, but deal less damage than their Staff Mode counterparts. The same goes for the Zone Attacks, which are both excellent tools for their respective kits. You can throw a Bash after a Neutral or Chain Light, or between 100 to 500 milliseconds in a forward dash. Sounds simple, right? Well, let's take a closer look. The default stance, Staff Stance, is essentially Big Mode. Big range, big damage, and big attack times. In Chains, your light attacks are enhanced, and everything has hyper armor. Basically, you hit like and take hits like a truck, so whipping an attack to get into your Chains isn't a bad idea. The Bash in this stance is a good mix-up to see if your opponent is paying attention, or even has a pulse. You may need to alert the authorities if they don't dodge this in a 1v1. It's a fantastic tool for ganking, though. And you deal 20 damage if you're not hit out of it. As Staff Stance is the default stance when you're not locked on, you also have a Sprinting Heavy from your right side that can start chains. In comparison, Hack Stance is Little Mode. Little range, little er damage, and little attack times. In chains, a light attack after a heavy is 400 milliseconds, and heavy finishers are unblockable. Your Bash and Hack Stance is pretty quick and gives you a light if it lands. You can follow up with another Bash, but if you throw another light, it is a finisher light. In either stance, you can target swap the bash or heavy after a forward dash, and of course the dodge attacks. Medjai's staff stance ensures he will win the trade wars in teamfights. Just keep target swapping or aim for externals and eventually some poor soul will eat 30 plus damage trying to parry you. <laughs> oh, he tried it. <laughs> you can try the axe mode in teamfights, but its short reach means externals will rarely land although having an unblockable heavy may be good for forcing a reaction out of an opponent. It's a bit bizarre that it isn't mentioned in the moveset, but Magi's guard direction currently matches the direction of your dodges, so bear that in mind. Magi's max punishes are interesting, not only because there's two stances and thus two different punishes, but because Magi can cancel the recoveries of parries with a stance switch, meaning you can perform any parry punish regardless of your stance if you time your transform correctly. For example, on heavy parries, you can land a light in either stance for the same damage, but in staff stance you can land a zone attack. If you're in axe stance and transform during the parry, you can still get that staff zone. On light parries, axes get a heavy in any direction, but you get more damage in staff stance with a side heavy. On guard breaks, you're stuck with what you've got. Axe stance gets a heavy in any direction, and staff mode lets you top heavy. On wall splats and axe mode, you can throw an unlocked heavy. Off a forward or back throw, it seems to always be guaranteed, but on side throw, if their guard is to the right, it'll be blocked. In staff stance, you can stay locked on for that side heavy. Just make sure you hit the opposite side your opponent is guarding if your guard is on top when you throw. When an opponent is unbalanced, parries and throws net the same punishes. Back-to-back -back heavies in Axe Stance, or zone into top heavy in Staff Stance. This is the only punish where Axe Stance is stronger, but remember you can't recovery cancel with a stance swap on throws. We're not actually done yet. Because Medjai's tier 2 feat makes Bash's debuff opponents, the following punishes may not be the highest damaging but can be considered in 4s. 
On heavy parries, Axe Mode can bash into light to reduce your opponent's attack damage. Light parries let you use the Staff Mode bash to reduce their defense. On wall splats, you can also land the Staff Bash if you're already in the stance. On knockdown parries and throws, in Axe Mode you can heavy into light into bash light. And in Staff Mode, just light, dash forward, and bash. You can even do this punish on a throw from Axe Mode by lighting and cancelling the recovery with a transform, then going into the bash. Medjai's fashion is great. I really love the references to different gods and his armor and weapons, although I do feel at times you're kinda locked into going with or playing around certain materials. For example, on the Revenant chest, there's a lot of Verdigree's armor that you cannot change. If you want to see a bit more of the fashion, I did cover that in the Meet the Medjai video. Medjai has all the assist perks, so Radiant Rebound, Remedy, Feline Agility, Supersonic, Clever Tactics, Rising Dawn, and Rapid Refresh. I might be biased, but because I think Medjai is much better as a team fighter, having Radiant Rebound and Feline Agility to let you get to a fight faster and Remedy helping keep your cup full in a fight are the best choices. But I can definitely see a case made for Rapid Refresh if you want that tier 4 as often as possible. In 4v4s, Medjai has the following feats. In tier 1, there's Sunshine Strength, Body Count, and Iron Lungs. Sunshine Strength gives Medjai a different buff for the rest of his life, depending on what weapon he uses to kill someone. Both buffs can be active at the same time, but don't stack with any other buffs. Body Count refills 1 HP and Stamina per minion killed. Iron Lungs lets you sprint while out of Stamina. In tier 2, Medjai can use Moonlight Drain, Executioner's Respite, or Thrilling Comeback. Moonlight Drain applies a different debuff to an enemy depending on what bash you land. Executioner's Respite gives you bonus health depending on the length of your execution. And Thrilling Combat heals you slightly when entering Revenge. In Tier 3 you can choose Scarab Relief, Heal on Block, or Second Wind. Scarab Relief lets you choose between Second Wind and Axe Mode, or a smaller AoE heal in Staff Mode. Heal on Block, Heals on Block. Second Wind heals you for 25 damage regardless of your stance. Finally, in Tier 4, there's Astral Manifestation, Catapult, and Aerostorm. Just pick Astral Manifestation. You've either got a high damage single hit projectile, or a bomb that's decent enough at clearing the minion lane. I think many players will find the most benefit from using Medjai's unique feats, although body count is pretty tempting not only because Medjai has insane minion clear, but Sunshine Strength only applies if you get a kill. Second Wind can also easily be chosen over Scarab Relief if you want the bigger self-heal without having to swap stances. I think Moonlight Drain and Astral Manifestation are probably the two you can expect every Medjai to run though. Lowering an opponent's defense when landing the Staff Bash has insane potential in ganks, and Astral Manifestation's axe is funny. <laughs> I'm glad I no longer have to keep this under wraps, but the Medjai is really fun to play. I'll be honest at first, I didn't really like the kit, but the more Medjai I played, the more I enjoyed him. Being able to access most of your max punishes from either stance will reward technical players, and honestly going full Unga Bunga in teamfights and staff mode is just very fun. If you're looking for a hero that anyone can pick up but will take time to master, try the Medjai. Thanks for watching, and thank you to my Patreon supporters, especially Shadow and the Rookie VA. Have a good one, and I'll see you on the next video.